<laughs> Citizen, you have 20 seconds to comply. Oh, um, uh, <laughs> I didn't know who I was talking to. My apologies, little lady. I, uh, let me introduce myself. I am Ed 209. Um, so I was wondering, maybe, perhaps you would like to, um, I, I, I don't know, if you would like to. Oh, um, that was not, I didn't mean to do that. That was. I can't help that. It's part of the programming. Um, uh, this happens all the time. I need to see a repairman very soon. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Player Display. Today, we're going to be looking at the absolutely horrible-looking young Hedo from Mafex as she was depicted in Squid Game. It was just a really terrifying image in the show, and it's really awesome to get her in plastic form. And something I will say... This figure is ludicrously overpriced. I found her in the Newbury comics, I think like a year or two ago, and two years later she was still there, but she was marked down to 30 bucks. The reason why I tell you that, I don't disclose prices very much, is if you want to go after this figure, then wait to find one on sale. It's not worth getting this figure at the full price. It's just not a good idea. But that being said, if you can find her discounted, she has a lot of absolutely horrific surprises in store. Of course, since this is an import figure, you can't really read a whole lot from the box if you don't speak Japanese, which of course I don't. But when you do actually get this figure, it is more than a statue. It's got some really horrifying surprises in store. So without further ado, let's start off with the box and see what absolutely terrifying gimmicks and gags this figure has to offer. So here is the box for the Young Heat doll, which is absolutely <laughs> littered with logos and unreadable, so we'll do our best here, but we have a picture of the figure, not really an action figure, more so a glorified statue with some animatronic elements, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that later, but it does have the usual Bandai flourishings, we have the really pretty holographic authentication sticker, Bandai Namco, Tamashi Lab, uh, something in Japanese that I can't read, and then a whole lot of other stuff down here. Off to this side, Young Hido, the classic circle, triangle, and square, more iconography from the show. Going around the top, front, and right side of the box, we have this a very pretty pink ribbon, which of course is not so pretty if you know its significance from Squid Game. Down here, Young Hido doll once again, more of the shapes. Off to the back, I imagine this is where it tells you all the features of the figure, but I couldn't read anything here, so I got this figure not knowing what to expect, and man, it had a, quite a few surprises in store. So, what are those surprises? Well, we'll get to those in a few moments here, but first, let's look at the main figure. So let's start off out here just to give you an idea of the sheer scale of this figure, which will be more apparent when we go into size comparisons, but she is meant for the six inch scale like any um, Mafex or uh, Tamashi Nations or SH figure arts, but she could also tower above some seven inch figures as well. So we're gonna have a good look at that a little bit later. But yeah, this is a pretty big statue. She's a about a foot tall, a little under, I'd say maybe about nine inches, if I'm correct. I could be wrong. I don't feel like getting ruler right now, so we're going to work with what we got here. But um, yeah, it's just a classic looking, like, Japanese schoolgirl sort of thing. I'm really not too sure. Uh, but yeah, it's a little girl with a cute little dress, some shoes, and, so and little stockings. I mean, nothing could go wrong. She's so cute. There's not going to be an issue here. She's adorable. She's not going to cause any problems, right? Oh, that's a little too close. Sorry, let me pop back out. So here's the, here's the face of the young Yi doll. And it, they did a very excellent job. Obviously, it's a very minimalistic design. But the few times where the details mattered, they did an absolutely spectacular job. The most important thing here, I think, is the eyes. And they did beautifully here. Of course, any other figure company, they would have just had the eyes sculpted in. But no, it looks like it is done with several components, several layers to it. So you have some acrylic clear plastic on top, then underneath you actually have a whole separate eyeball. Now the one thing you can do, which I think would have been great, is if you could take the face off and move the eyes around a little bit, as she did when she was staring all the totally willing contestants down before they were shot to death in the show. But 
Regardless, it still gives her a lot of menace. If I think I feel like if they screwed up the eyes, then this entire figure would totally fall flat. It just wouldn't work. But because they did them so well, it gives her that menace rather than her just kind of coming off as clunky and stupid looking. But no, in this case, they did a very good job. <laughs> it's called a little girl stupid looking. Imagine me. I'm going to make a great dad one day. Off to the side, you've got her looking like Boo from Monsters, Inc. you got little pigtails off to the sides. Going off to the back, it's just a flat hair sculpt. There's no um, ridges or anything in there to suggest individual strands of hair, nor should there be. It's supposed to look flat like that. And yeah, just a very creepy and ominous looking doll. Down to the rest of her outfit, we have a little yellow undershirt. Well, I keep saying little, but that is definitely not the case for this figure. You have an orange skirt and top. We also have these really long arms here with uh, these suggested joints, though, they do not articulate whatsoever, so be aware of that. Don't try and go, oh, how far can her arm go to 90 degrees? It won't do that. It will just break. So just remember, this is all one full sculpt. And same goes for the hands. They don't swivel or anything. They just hang, hang down there, but she doesn't do a whole ton of movement anyways. Down to the legs, we have some stockings and some little shoes. At this point, when I was looking at this figure, I'm like, okay, this is a cool little statue. I got this at a good price. But then I look down here, and I'm like, oh, there's a speaker. What other secrets are? is this little doll hiding over here? Next, let's look at all the various accessories that this figure comes with. Most of them are made of paper for some reason, but just so you can get an idea of what you're getting into. First, we have this little... Uh, Flash course instruction pamphlet over here gives you a few, few more images of the figure along with some shots from the show itself so you could do a little comparison and it's pretty much dead on they did it exactly right as Bandai always should you have her upper arm here over here that's the extra accessory that she comes with along with the three symbols as per usual home a lot more of the circles squares and triangles on the back we also have this trading card of sorts. So again, you got those three shapes which are plastered everywhere on everything that's not the figure. And off to the back, you have this unique red light, green light, red light, green light thing going on. Um, not too sure what to do with this, but I like it, it's pretty. Then we also have this really massive instruction manual over here, which does have English translations. So I'm not gonna bother you with this just because it's really long, but basically it's automated so that way the head moves, which is absolutely terrifying. But there's original TV mode, there's random mode, and there's background music. What, really? Okay. We have an actual figure stand, which she doesn't even really need, but gives her a little extra flourishing. Again, circle, triangle, square, of course, and two really giant pegs specifically for the doll, and then you can peg her right up. And the last thing we have over here is this alternate arm for when she is turning around to face the tree, and it is pre-angled so that way the arm is up and the palm is out, so she could be leaning against a wall, a shelf, or anything like that. So whatever it is, your pleasure, and you can make her looking pretty menacing. Here we have the base. You got the two holes at the bottom of the feet. Just gotta port them right on. No issue. You gotta bend the legs a little bit, but then eventually it goes on. And there we go, right there. As for replacing the arm, it's a little bit dicey. I believe this arm uh, is a lefty, that's right. So you kind of just got to jimmy off the arm right there. You can sort of see it's got a hexagon. Yeah, a hexagon peg. Take the arm and just be sure you angle it right. And it should be able to fit. Maybe. It's a little tricky. I don't prefer this arm, fortunately. So, yeah, that's the best I'm getting. It's not really going all the way in, but again, I got it for 30 bucks, so it doesn't sting as much. But yeah, you can have her, I'm just facing the wall, putting her palm up. Oh, there goes the arm again. So yeah, we're not gonna worry about that arm. Obviously, it's this one that I prefer the most, and that one goes on no problem. So yeah, that's just another little QC issue. But again, for me, I don't really care. I prefer her just in this idle stance where you're not really sure what she's gonna do next. So before we see what this little dolly can do, I will show you where the batteries are stored. They are in the back of the skirt. Um, you need to slide the back portion down. Um, oh, you gotta lift it a little bit here at this little rectangle shape there. And then you'll see we have the battery compartment. The battery is already in there. They're not included, but I already put them in. And then you have an on switch. <laughs> so then we can just take this piece, pull it back on. And there we are, she is now ready for action. Speaking of action, I'm gonna to need to refer to the instructions. So let's see here. 
So step one, set young he doll to face backward. All right, as you wish, let's do that. I'm doing original TV mode, by the way. I'm not gonna do all the modes because that would take forever, but just to show you that this thing does indeed work, we'll hear the explanation of the rules of the red light, green light game in Korean. Okay. Those aren't rules. So these instructions are not that great. They don't do a very good job at explaining exactly what steps need to be done or for to be doing things. But I think I remember as I was screwing around with it, you can turn the head around and then push it. Okay, that's all right. This has been a fun review. I'll see, I'll see you guys later. Does this bitch shut up? Um, so, uh, uh, can I talk now, please? All right, thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> stop I'm trying to do a review here, man. <laughs> See, this is how Skynet takes over. So, whatever I just did, I guess if you do it, then she goes for infinity and doesn't stop. I don't know. So, okay, I'm going to turn her off and then we can actually wrap up this damn review. Please stay still. You're going on timeout. What'd you call me? Yeah, after playing around with this figure for a while, it looks like to achieve the best results, or at least the horrifying results I got, switch her on, press head down, turn it backwards, then press it again. Then that's when she'll do the entire gambit as she did in the show. And then, yeah, you'll get your rules for red light, green light, and Korean. And there you are. Okay, so now that I've deactivated this little spawn of Satan, we can go ahead and do some size comparisons. So over here, we have a Fush Toy Samurai who's at the six inch scale, who would be at the same scale as all the pink soldiers and the front man who they have also produced, who I do not own because they are severely overpriced as well, as is pretty much all Squid Game officially licensed merch for some reason, probably trying to fund season two. But we also have the McFarlane, Batman and Robin, well, Robin over here for a seven inch scale figure. And no matter which way you do it, I I think the doll works pretty well. Obviously meant for six inch scale, but for seven inch scale, she's still a giant through and through. So looking fantastic. Now to get her next to some other robot characters, we have the NECA Robocop Ed 209, and also Quaritch and his mech from McFarlane. And last but not least, we have the Star Wars Black Series, Mecha Muck. Uh, I, I don't understand you. I don't know what that means. Um. Uh, okay, 1950s crackhead child, I'll do whatever you say if it gets me to safety! Here we go! Now, if I just believe in myself, then I should be- So that's about a wrap on the young he doll from Squid Game. Um, she's very vocal, but she has a lot of class, she's very cute. If you- again, get- get her on sale! She's a good figure to have in your collection if you want a very big horror-adjacent character. Or if you just like creepy ass robots in general or creepy dolls, it, 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 it doesn't matter what type of collector you are, it's a very good toy. Just be sure you. Be sure you don't pay stock price for it. But for 30 bucks. For. For 30 bucks, she was a steal. I highly recommend this fig, a creeper mother. Okay, so that's about all. Uh, you take it for face value. And that's what you're, uh, that's what you're getting. So if you enjoyed this review, then please, as per usual, be sure to. Nope. Like. Comment. Ring the bell to be notified of our latest arrivals. And subscribe. This is the editor speaking. Humbly reminding you to support the pod Patreon in the description to guarantee new content every single week. Thank you guys very much for watching. Rock on, and I will see you all later. <laughs> this is going to sound awful, but she looks a little bit like my little cousin, actually. <laughs>